I went to New York this past summer, and this is how I survived traveling alone for the first time in the Big Apple. So, funny story. When I left my apartment to originally BART to the airport, I was going to get my eyebrows threaded to clean up a little bit before my trip. But while I'm waiting in line, I realized that the BART takes an hour to take me to the airport, and I only had like 30 minutes left, so I was probably gonna miss my flight. In the end, they ended up delaying my flight, so thank God I ended up landing at around 2 or 3 a.m., so the moment I got to my friend's apartment, I just knocked out. The next morning marked day one of the trip, and I realized, wow, it's really similar to SF, except dirtier and really hot. After sweating a bunch, I walked to the World Trade Center to visit my friend Yui who was interning at Spotify that summer. And let me tell you, Spotify was so cool. It was basically my playground for the day. The view from the top was breathtaking and Spotify has all these rooms like a quiet room, focus room, yoga room, colorful tube room, a freaking Nintendo gaming room, a band room for some reason, a retro arcade room, an arts and crafts room with a sewing machine, and get this, a whole PC gaming lounge. If this isn't work life balance, I don't know what is. And most people at Spotify are work from home, so the office was pretty barren when I visited. After that short tour, we get to my favorite part of New York, the food. I made a whole separate other video about the food in New York, so if you guys are interested, click in the top right corner and it'll take you to that video. First, we hit up Ruby's Cafe for some Australian food and we got a burger and some tomato cream pasta and it was hands down the best food of this trip. Afterwards, we got some New York pizza and began exploring the rest of the city. First, we hit up the Brooklyn Bridge. As we were walking there, the water reminded me of San Francisco's Pier 39. At first, I asked my friends, why are we going to the Brooklyn Bridge? It's literally just a bridge. But honestly, after seeing it, I was so shocked to see how pretty it was. And that's when I realized, wait, just by walking across this bridge, you literally transport from one borough to another, which honestly just blew my mind. While exploring, I realized that New York is a very big city. When people say I live in the city, I used to think, uh, don't we all live in the city? But honestly, now I get it. The roads are cramped, all housing is in high-rise apartments, and there's not a lot of open space for parks or nature. The buildings are either very nice or very run down. And I think the best example of this was High Line, which is basically this gentrified one mile garden that was built out of an old railway. As you walk down the High Line, all you can see is high rise luxury apartments. And when you look down, there is a clear wealth divide with old rundown buildings at the bottom and high rise rich buildings at the top. That being said, the High Line was super pretty and the plants were such a vibe. Overall, there was a great view of all of the buildings on the sides. After High Line, we chilled around the mall area before heading to Los Tacos, which consistently ranks top for tacos in New York. I'm sorry to say this, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but it was not that good, and it was really expensive. I think it was like $5 a taco, and it was just all right for me. The craziest part about this trip is that my cousin was also in New York at the exact same time moving into Penn. That being said, I was able to crash with her for the night at the Hyatt Grand Central, and it was so bougie. And I even got a quick workout at the gym too on the top floor, and I called it a night. The next morning was all about exploring the big city with my Viet Roots, aka my cousin Michelle and my aunt. First, we hit up Times Square, and oh my god, it is a Gen Zers dream because there was so much stimulus everywhere from the huge colorful billboard screens to all of the vendors to the loaded streets with a bunch of pedestrians. No matter where you looked, there was always noise and people moving or something moving. Once we were in Times Square, we ended up going to Tiso, which sells luxury watches, and my cousin actually wanted to buy a watch, so we just browsed for a little bit, and she ended up grabbing this small golden one, which looks pretty good on her. Then we were off to Chinatown, because we were hungry. While on the subway, I thought the back looked kind of like Rainbow Road, so I just wanted to show that off. Growing up Asian, I never understood why my parents always wanted to go to Asian restaurants when we were on vacation, but now that I'm older, I get it. Believe me, did I get to eat my Asian food. While waiting in line, my aunt bought some fruits for us, um, longan and mangosteen, which is the best fruit of all time. And if you've never tried mangosteen, you're seriously missing out. You should go get some. After waiting like one hour, we finally got the TikTok famous Chung Fun Cart, which are handmade rice noodles with soy sauce, chili garlic sauce, shrimp, and pork. The texture was amazing, and it felt very QQ or bouncy every time you chewed. Next, we hit up where we got 10 dumplings for $4.50 and $3 peanut noodles. New York was a pretty expensive place to visit in general, but Chinatown really shows that you can live in the city on a budget. Also, please ignore my hair for the rest of this vlog. I don't know if it was the New York community or what, but my hair was so frizzy and puffy. Anyway, then we went to the 9-11 Memorial, which was huger than I expected. And I actually wondered, what's in the middle? Like, is there like a dungeon in the middle? But yeah, from there, my cousin and I split up because she wanted to go on a ferry to the Statue of Liberty, but I had more important things to do. I visited the only Nintendo store in all of America. 
Anyway, I already made a video all about that, so if you're interested, click on the top right corner and it'll take you to that video. But here's a little sneak peek of what I did see. After Nintendo, I was pretty hungry, so I met up with my big crystal at Chelsea Market, we got some halal cart, and we ended off day two of New York with some chocolate bread. The next day, we were feeling kind of bloated, so we rented out some bikes and biked around the entire city. It was honestly such a crazy experience sharing the roads with so many cars, especially because the roads are cramped in New York, and I definitely took a risk filming while biking, but it's fine because I survived. Something I noticed about New York is that because it's mainly high-rise buildings, there's not a lot of open space or nature, which I do tend to enjoy more while living in larger cities and suburbs. But boy, when we hit Central Park, I was in shock at how big it was. It is quite literally a gigantic rectangle of park in the city. I guess instead of having many little parks in the city, when they were building the city, they were just like, eh, we can just combine it into all one massive block and force everyone to come here. Also, quick side note, there were a lot of people with horseback carriages, which you do really do not see in suburban cities. And so yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. After a while, we stopped biking to take a break at the Met Museum and just strolled around while browsing the local art vendors and roaming the streets. We also went to Chinatown again, passing through Little Italy before beginning our five course feast biking frenzy where we literally just biked from restaurant to restaurant trying to eat everything before they closed. Here's a little sneak peek of what we had on our frenzy. Some pork buns in Chinatown, rice stuffed tofu with toppings, 12 course omakase, creme brulee boba crepe cake. We even tried biking as fast as we could to go to K-Town to get some mochi, but they closed when we got there. K-Town was really cool though. It's very nightlife -y and there was a cool food court with a squid game mural. You know it wouldn't be a true New York trip without being in Times Square at night, so I ended off day three with a walk down the block. And oh my god, it's so unreal being at the center of so much creativity, hustle, and bustle. Guys, I'm just gonna say it right now, I will make it onto one of those billboards one day. Mark my words. I even saw Mario and Luigi. On the final day, I went to the New York Times building to meet up with my friend Rene, who was interning at Datadog. The building had this array of LED circuit boards which reacted when you walked past them and an indoor garden which connected from one side of the room to the other. Now that's what I call a subtle flex. While at Datadog, I just lounged around the office, had some lunch, explored the different rooms, got a little bit of work done, got some free snacks, and caught up with my friend before hopping on my flight back home. All in all, traveling in New York was my first experience traveling alone and getting a taste of what huge corporate life tasted like. One of the reasons I went to New York in the first place was to determine if I wanted to live there after college, and after staying there in a couple days, I don't. It was fun, yes, but it's also really busy, loud, humid, and cramped, which is the opposite of what I prefer when it comes to living. That being said, New York is a city that really packs a punch, and I definitely didn't have enough time to do everything. I would 1000% come back with my friends and family, and if you're thinking of coming too, here's my advice. 1. Eat all the food. 2. Learn to use the subway. And 3. Watch out for the roaches. Alright, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Bye!